Hello, my name is Alex Stock. I am a biochemistry major at Creighton University, and today I'm going to talk to you about RNA ribose switches and how the GLMS ribose switch in particular can be used as a potential antibiotic. So RNA ribose switches are post-transcriptional methods of regulating protein expression in bacterial cultures. In most bacterial cells, they do not have ribose switches, but in certain bacterial cells, we have ribose switches that can express that can downregulate protein expression within them. We wanted to focus on the GLMS ribose switch, which goes to downregulate the expression of GLN6B, which is a molecule critical in forming the cell wall of bacterial cells such as anthrax, TB, MRSA, and the harmless soil bacteria B. subtilis. So what GLN6P does is it cleaves the ribozyme switch and it turns off expression of the GLMS messenger RNA which actually creates more GLN6P. So when we have an upregulation of GLN6P, we cleave the ribose switch and we have less GLN6P being made. So what we want to do is create a molecule that mimics GLN6P and can shut off this switch to basically stop the production of GLN6P and forming the cell wall of harmful bacterial cultures. When we go through, what we wanted to study first was how exactly does glucosamine 6 phosphate bind to the ribose switch, as we can see here, and what functionalities on GLN6P are critical to causing cleavage right here to see downregulation and GLMS translation. So, what we noticed was that. The regions in blue here are critical in causing the cleavage and the ribose switch by causing a proton hopping mechanism to occur up here. Across this here, we can see that uh, we had solutions full of analog that go across here, these analogs, and then we treated them with the ribose switches. If the ribose switches were cleaved, we would see two bands. Highlighted in blue here, we see that two bands are present for all those analogs that work. And these blue functionalities were considered critical to allowing this to work. So what we wanted to study were whether or not this molecule in bacterial cultures can cause bacterial inhibition. And we did this by topically adding these analogs in various concentrations to B. subtilis in culture. And we grew these overnight. So what this is called is a minimum inhibitory concentration test. What we do is we measure how much bacterial growth by measuring the absorbance of light that goes through these plates. If the culture is turbid, then we end up noting a high absorbance and a high bacterial growth. If the solution is cleared, there's no bacterial growth, and essentially our antibiotic was working. What we noticed by just adding our analog to our bacterial cultures was that there was no bacterial inhibition occurring. So we thought that the problem with our mechanism was in delivery, because these molecules are charged molecules and it has a, very, a problem with getting across cell membranes since it is highly charged. So what we wanted to do is mimic cellular to human fever conditions, which is the spike in temperature, in which case it makes the cell wall more permeable. So we d introduced a heat shocking procedure where we would take the bacterial cultures and place them in a hot water bath in the presence of these analogs and see whether or not we would get bacterial inhibition. What we noticed is that nothing actually occurred as far as bacterial inhibition. And we still thought that our problem still lies in the ability to get our analog into the cell to allow cleavage of this messenger RNA ribose switch. So what we tried next was lipofectamine which is a negatively charged molecule that could help carry our analog that's positively charged across the cell membrane. We noted that that did not work as well, and so we tried a, we're trying a new method, in which case we're developing liposomes, which are small, greasy, encapsulated uh, analogs. And what we noticed is that these analogs being packaged in these nanoparticles called liposomes are too cloudy in our solution to actually perform the minimum inhibitory concentration test using the absorbance of light. 
So our next method is going to be using fluorescently labeled phospholipids in the production of these nanoparticles and see under a fluorescent microscope whether or not we can actually deliver our analogs into the bacterial cell culture. Thank you.